Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Pimax Crystal or the Pimax Crystal Light? Which one is best for you? Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's video, we will compare and contrast the Pimax Crystal to the Pimax Crystal Light. We will go over things such as tech specs, hardware, and software on both of these headsets. Towards the end, we will also pop the hood and take a look underneath and see what may have changed from one to the other. Now, I just have one reminder, this is not a complete review of either of these two headsets. However, like in all of my reviews, I will try to keep this as objective as possible and provide you with as many facts about the headsets as I can. There may be some times where I will need to offer up my opinion, but I will keep that to a minimum. By the end of this video, my hope is that you will have a better understanding of both headsets and what they're capable of. This way it can help guide you in the right direction for your purchase. Talking about purchase, if you are considering the purchase of either of these two units, I have an affiliate link as well as a coupon code down below in the description. Now it doesn't cost you anything extra to use that link, but it does provide us with a small commission to help keep the channel going. Before we get started, I just have one disclaimer. Pimax did send both of these headsets for review. However, that will not influence any of my opinions about either of these two headsets or what I'm about to show you. Pimax is also not privy to any of my videos beforehand, so they're seeing it just as you are. If you have any comments throughout today's video, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and find it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, uh, let's get ready to rumble! All right, so now let's go over some of the tech specs for each of the two headsets. We'll first go over all the similarities, and then I'll go over all the differences. So to start off with, both of the headsets have a resolution of 2880 by 2880 per eye. They both come with 35 PPD lenses from the factory. The lenses are made of glass and they are spheric lenses. The tracking mode on both headsets are a 6DOF inside out tracking with lighthouse capabilities. They both have an integrated 3.5 millimeter audio jack and they are both DMAS compatible. And that just about covers all of the similarities between the two headsets as far as technical specs. Now let's go over some of the differences. We'll start with the Crystal Light first, and then we'll go over the Crystal. Starting with Crystal Light, we have some refresh rates. They start at 60, 72, 90, and 120. The weight of the headset, we will test that in a moment. The IPD adjustment on the Crystal Light is from 58 to 72 millimeters. However, it is a manual adjustment. Foveated rendering on the Crystal Light is the fixed foveated rendering 2.0 as there is no eye tracking in the Crystal Light. The field of view as displayed on the Pimax website is 130 degrees diagonally. The Crystal Light is only a PC VR headset. Starting with the refresh rates on the Pimax Crystal, they start at 72, 90, and 120. The weight of the Pimax Crystal, as I weighted in my previous Pimax Crystal review series, was 1,151 grams. Link for that video will be down in the description if you wish to watch that. The field of view on the Pimax Crystal horizontally is 125 degrees. Diagonal is 140 degrees. Now these specs are listed on the Pimax website for the field of view. IPD adjustment on the Pimax Crystal is from 58 to 72 millimeters. However, this is an automatic IPD adjustment. The automatic IPD adjustment is powered by the Tobii eye tracking system that is incorporated into the Pimax Crystal headset. The Crystal also has dual modes. So if you are a PC VR user or if you are a standalone headset user, this can accommodate both. To power the Pimax Crystal in standalone mode, there is a battery that is on the back of the headset. This battery is also needed if you are using PC VR. The Pimax Crystal supports wireless usage in both modes via the 60G wireless module from Pimax. 
Hey guys, Future John here. So during the editing process, I realized I didn't give you a big piece of information that you need to make your decision, and that is price. As of right now, the Crystal Light is only available in the local dimming version for $8.99. If you do not need controllers, headset only is $7.99. The Crystal, unfortunately, is not available on Pimax website for the $15.99 that's advertised. If you scroll all the way to the bottom to the affiliates, it will have the partner sites that will have the headsets available. In the U.S., they were anywhere between $16.49 and $16.70. I believe that also came with the controllers and the batteries for the headset. The next thing I want to go over is some of the software for both of the headsets, as there are some differences between the Crystal and the Crystal Light. The first thing I want to touch on is the Crystal Light and the new upscaling mode that they have adapted into the Pimax software. What exactly is upscaling mode? Upscaling mode is an innovative feature that employs advanced upscaling algorithms to improve frame rates in VR games. Basically, what upscaling is going to do it is going to render the image at a lower resolution and then upscale it, adding sharpening to rescale it back to the native resolution of the headset. As you can see on the screen, the upscaling mode is only compatible at the moment with 90 Hz refresh rate. I believe if they haven't done so already, they're going to be adding a slider to adjust the level of upscaling for the headset. The next feature that I want to talk about that is going to be accessible to both of the headsets is the OpenXR Runtime, or I should say Pimax OpenXR Runtime. At the moment, I am currently testing a beta release of the software, and I will say it's going to eliminate a lot of steps that we previously needed to do with the Pimax XR and then with OpenXR Toolkit. We no longer are going to need either of these two with the new Pimax software that will be coming down the pike here shortly. What OpenXR does is it bypasses Steam completely, thus giving you more performance out of the headset because it doesn't have to run through the Steam ecosystem. Now in the past, we needed to run a separate program called Pimax XR to utilize the Pimax XR runtime. And we also needed to run a program called OpenXR Toolkit and this was to allow us foveated rendering and a couple other things inside that toolkit that are really useful. Pimax XR was created by Matthew, which was the visionary behind the OpenXR toolkit and Pimax XR, including quad views, which is also going to be incorporated in the new software. Big shout out to Matt. Thanks very much for being a part of all this and making our VR experience that much better. Thanks, buddy. All right, so those were just a few of the changes that are going to be coming to the Pimax software, if they haven't already. Now let's move into the hardware on both of these headsets, and we'll inspect them from front to back, taking a look at any changes that may have come down the line for the Crystal Light. So I think the biggest difference between the two headsets that was a highly controversial item when the Crystal first came out is the battery. This battery is only needed for the Pimax Crystal, and I will say as far as gameplay in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I get about three hours of gameplay per battery. The other thing that you'll notice on this battery is that the tab on the one side is actually broken off. So the way that these tabs actually attach is right at the very top, and it's only attached by a little piece of plastic here. So be very careful with the tabs on these, and I was using this as normal, and it just broke in my hand. However, it will stay intact in the headset with just one locking tab on there. The next thing that has changed because of the battery is the top strap that's on the crystal. On the crystal, we have a rubber strap that's going to connect the headset front to the battery, and this is where all the power wires are running. Underneath of that, we just have a very thin strap here that's elastic to help keep the headset balance on top of our head, which doesn't really do a very good job. Since then, Pimax have also come out with the adjustable top head strap. Now, this actually is a twofold benefit by using this top head strap. One, it can take the play up between 
the top of the strap and your head. Two, when you tighten this strap down, I don't know if I can get it in the camera, but it will also cinch the sides closer together, squeezing it against your head, making a snugger fit so that it doesn't move around so much. You'll also notice I do have a couple mods on the crystal, like the top Apache strap, as well as the balancing kit on the back and the front facial gasket. All of those I did get from Studio Form, and links for those will be down in the description. There's no affiliate link there. Now let's take a look at the back of each of the headsets. On the Pimax Crystal Lite, we have a much different back support or head support on this pad. Now you can see just how thick this pad is on the back of our head, and it kind of wraps around the back of our head, so it's very, very comfortable to wear. Now that is very different from when we look at the Pimax Crystal. On the Pimax Crystal, if we take a look at the back head support, is a very thin piece of material here. The other thing that I noticed that is very different on the back here are the pads on each side. So you'll notice on this one, if I move the back headrest in, these sides don't actually protrude out like they do on the Pimax Crystal Light. So the back padding here actually doesn't hit the back of your head at all. Both headsets come from the factory with these full face gaskets, and Pimax does also offer a 15 millimeter gasket, which you can use on the front as well. The other very noticeable thing about the Pimax Crystal Light is we no longer have a side display port like we do on the Pimax Crystal. Now, the reason for the side display port was so that you can use it in standalone mode and disconnect your wire so you can walk around with just the headset on. But for those of you who are using this solely for PC VR, it was almost a hassle to have that on the side there. The next thing I want to talk about is the sound quality between the D-Mass speakers and the S-Mass speakers that come stock on the Pimax Crystal Lite. Flipping both of the headsets on their side, you can clearly see that the speaker of the D-Mass actually comes down much farther and is going to be just about right over your ear versus the S-Mass speakers that come on the headset from the factory, they are much, much higher, so the sound doesn't get projected into your ear much like they do on the D-Mass. So for those of you asking, well, is the D-Mass speakers a worthy upgrade for the headset? I would have to say yes. They make a huge, huge difference in sound quality as well as the bass and overall fullness of the sound. The IPD adjustment on both headsets are a little bit different. The adjustment done on the Crystal Light is done via a little wheel right here on the upper left-hand corner of the headset. I hope you can see that in the picture. On the upper right-hand side of the Crystal Light, we have a volume adjustment and a power button right here. If we take a look at the Crystal, we have one more button over on the left-hand side. This button right here is so that we can manually adjust the IPD electronically. So we can either have Toby eye tracking adjust the lenses itself, or we can use this button here to manually adjust the IPD ourselves. On both headsets, we have a 3.5 millimeter jack. So if you do wish to use your own headset, you can plug it right into that. One thing you'll also notice difference under the underside here is on the Pimax Crystal, we have a USB-C port, and on the Crystal Light, that port is closed up. All the venting on the bottom of the Crystal and Crystal Light look to be the same, and if we take a look on the sides, the side venting also looks to be the same. On the front of our headsets, we have four cameras, two on top and two on bottom, and this will provide us our six DOF tracking for the headset. On the top of the Crystal, we do have another port here that is covered up by a rubber connection. And on the Crystal Light, we do not have that port. All right, so now let's throw the Pimax Crystal Light on a scale, and then we can see the difference in weight from the original Crystal. I also wanna preface this by saying, when I did the initial weight of the Crystal in the video that's posted in the description, that was using the D-Mass speakers. As you see on this one, I'm using the S-Mass, so these speakers are most likely a slight bit lighter than the D-Mass. Just something to be aware of.
All right, so I hope you can see that on the camera. The weight of the Pimax Crystal Light is 835 grams. If we subtract the 1151 of what I initially weighed the crystal from the 835 grams of the Crystal Light is a 316 gram difference. Keep in mind that we do not have the DMAS speakers on there and that could be the difference in weight. The last thing I wanna go over before we tear these headsets apart or pull the front cover off is I wanna go over a quick tip on how to keep the lenses from fogging up in either of the two headsets. This will help prevent any fogging of the lenses. I take a microfiber towel, wipe it on, let it sit for, you know, 20, 30 seconds, wipe it off, and you are good to go. You may need to do that more than one time. I actually had to apply it twice to get the desired results. The other thing that you can do to help reduce the amount of condensation or fog that you will get on your lenses, in the Pimax software for the screen time, when you take off your headset, the screen time is set to, I believe, 20 seconds. If you set that to about five minutes and fire up the headset, let the screen stay on for about five minutes to warm up before you put the headset on, that will help reduce any condensation or fogging inside the lens. And that will also play hand in hand with this so you will not have any fogging inside of your headset. All right, so now let's jump into the fun part of this comparison and let's pop the front covers and see what is different under the hood. All right, so it looks like down in the corners of the headset, there is a little gap so we can get a screwdriver in there. Well, let's pop this off. And this procedure is necessary if you want to put the Lighthouse faceplate on this also. The cover itself is just a thin piece of plastic just to protect all of the components that are inside. Huh. Okay, well, that's not good. So as soon as I pulled off the cover plate, this fell out from inside. Well, before I put it back together, I'm gonna have to search and see if I can figure out where that goes. Now let's take off the front cover of the Crystal Light. It will shake, make sure there's nothing else in that one. All right, so turning these headsets up on end, you can clearly see that we have a bunch of stuff that is not in the Crystal Light. Most noticeably are the fans that are right in the center. So if you do own a Pimax crystal, it would be worthwhile to open this up every once in a while and blow these fans out with compressed air. When you do that, you wanna make sure that you hold the fan ever so gently with your finger. You do not want the fan to spin when you are shooting compressed air through it, that will ruin the bearings of the fans. As you can see here on the top of the crystal, we have these little fins, and that is what's going to help cool as the air blows across those fins. Other than the two blower fans that I see here, there's not much else difference that we can pick out between the crystal and the crystal light other than the weight. Okay, so now that you have seen the differences of both of these headsets, well, hopefully I was able to help point you in the right direction of which headset is gonna be best for you. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap us up for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoy today's content and find it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tickle on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button to all of my flight simmer friends around the world. Keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.